Angel here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my Tesla Model 3, aka Baby Dragon. This video is a follow-up video for those of you who watched my video tour of my Model 3 a few days ago and asked to see autopilot. So today I'm going to show you a demo of autopilot mode, also known as AP2 in this Tesla Model 3. Plus, I am going to show you what everybody probably wants to know, which is what happens when you're in autopilot and you let go of the steering wheel. So if you're interested in seeing that, keep watching. So first off, let me just give you guys a quick overview of autopilot. So autopilot is semi-autonomous driving. Now that means it assists the driver, but it's not fully autonomous yet, which means you still need to pay attention. So all these sensors that are around the Tesla Model 3, there is a camera mounted above the license plate, there's ultrasonic sensors all around the car, and a camera mounted on each door pillar, which you can see on the side doors. That's the hardware that helps with autopilot and to help the car actually drive. And today I am demoing AP2 in my Model 3. Now AP2 stands for Autopilot 2, and there is AP1, which are on the older versions of the Tesla. So there are Tesla Model S's that have AP1 and also AP2. But in its current form today, all the Model 3's are made with AP2 hardware. The car is also equipped with some electronically assisted braking and steering, but honestly, that's not as cool as some of the other features. Cool features being lane assist, collision avoidance, speed assist, and auto high beam. Now, if you are getting a new Model 3, you can't use autopilot right away. The car has to calibrate itself. So basically you need to drive it around, train it like you're training a pet. So like I trained a baby dragon, I drove him around for about, I think it was 50 miles or so. So I drove him around town. I also drove on the highways and I drove really nicely. So that way I could kind of show him the ropes and get him calibrated. And once you have your car calibrated, two of the most important features, well, at least I think they're most important, are the traffic aware cruise control and the auto steer. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's show you how to use autopilot. I'm gonna start with the traffic aware cruise control. Now, traffic aware cruise control is activated by pulling down on the steering wheel right stock once. After pulling the stock down once and releasing it, the speedometer limit icon, which is usually gray, turns blue. And that means a traffic aware cruise control is on and you can go ahead and release your foot from the accelerator pedal. Now you can also see this number on the dash. So if, for example, your maximum speed that you want to go on is 70 miles per hour, the traffic aware cruise control will hold you at a 70 miles per hour speed or less based on traffic conditions. Now what happens if there's tons of traffic and the car ahead of you slows down to a complete stop? Well, traffic aware cruise control will also slow down your car. And once the car ahead of you leaves, the car will then go ahead and restart and follow. So that is a pretty cool feature. One step beyond traffic aware cruise control is the auto steer function. And this is super cool. So to turn auto steer on, you basically pull down on that same right stock twice. So once to activate traffic aware cruise control and then the second time to activate auto steer. And this will show up on the left side of your dash as a steering wheel icon in the color blue. An auto steer detects the lane markings on the road and also the cars around you to intelligently keep your car in the middle of the road. And that's really smart. I know baby dragon, you're so smart. And if at any time you need to cancel auto steer, just start steering manually. It'll disengage auto steer automatically. Or you can press on the brake paddle and that'll also cancel auto steer as well. Now, huge, huge note here. Auto steer, just like traffic aware cruise control, is a beta feature. And with auto steer, you must have your hands on the wheel. Now, while you don't have to, I always try and put my hands on the steering wheel. And once you have auto steer and traffic aware cruise control on, you are on autopilot, which means you can do auto lane change. So auto lane change allows you to just turn your blinkers on left or right, and the car will automatically look around and check your blind spot area and change lanes for you. And it'll even after changing lanes, turn the blinkers off. That is so cool, isn't it? 
I don't have a problem changing lanes, but I could see some people who are afraid to change lanes when they're going fast on the highway because you have to look forward and then once you do the blind spot check, either left or right, there's that moment in time where your eyes are off the road and the person in front of you just happens to, at the most inconvenient moment, come to a complete stop or slam on their brakes. And if you're not paying attention, that's a huge risk for an accident. So I really think auto lane change is super cool. Now you're probably all wondering what happens when you don't hold the steering wheel. So if you fall asleep, if you are super distracted, what happens? Well, don't do it. Pay attention at all times. But if you must know, I did do a little test where I was driving on autopilot and I did not hold the steering wheel. And this is after the car flashed at me multiple times, giving me multiple warnings and reminders. So the car was beeping. Before that, I had my music on and when it asked me to hold the steering wheel and it was flashing blue, I didn't. And finally the music turned off, there was beeping in the car, the car automatically slowed down, the hazard lights came on. I was so surprised at the hazard lights coming on, but actually, now that I think about it, that is a really good idea. Another consideration is that once you get this warning signal, I was notified that I could no longer use autopilot again on this trip which is probably a really smart idea on Tesla's part because if you're ignoring all the flashing and beeping and all the warning signs and you're just not flat out not paying attention, you should not be allowed to use autopilot again. And if you wanna use autopilot again, you will have to bring the car to a complete stop. I think you have to shut it off and then you can use it again. And to clarify, this doesn't mean you can't drive your car. It just means autopilot will not work for the remainder of your drive. So now let's talk about use cases. I wanna share with you some of my thoughts on what are some good use case scenarios for autopilot. And in my opinion, the do's of autopilot are do use them on the highway when you're driving long trips. Straight roads are great. Slightly curved roads are great. Exits, maybe, I'll get into that later. Uh, stop and go traffic excellent. It does a really good job in stop and go traffic. I think it does a better job than I would because a lot of times when you're in stop and go traffic, there's the whole stop and go, stop and go. And the car does a really good job with keeping the right amount of distance in between and making sure not to rear end somebody. So stop and go traffic is a really good time to use autopilot. Now what about some don'ts and cautions? I don't think it's a good idea to use autopilot locally because city driving, there's a lot of stop signs, a lot of stop lights, and the car yet cannot detect stop signs or stop lights. And so that's really dangerous if you're driving in the city and you're on autopilot and there's a stop light that turns red, the car won't be able to see that and it'll just blow right through the stop light. So I definitely would avoid using autopilot on city roads. Another word of caution when using autopilot is going across bridges. And I'm not talking about the big expansive bridges. I am talking about the smaller bridges where the roads and the lines aren't as delineated. Right where the bridge entrance is, because there may be a change in the lines and the width of the roads, the car may or may not go towards one direction. And I've seen this happen once on AP1 when I was in a Model S demo drive. So I've been really like cautious to hold onto my steering wheel and just pay more attention right when I'm going onto that bridge because hey, it's better safe than sorry, right? Another scenario you should watch out for is coming across freeway exits. The car reads the lane markings. So if it sees the lane getting wider because there's an exit, it may want to kind of veer off and go towards that exit. So I would just put your hands on the steering wheel, hold firm, and basically make sure that it's not veering off. I think after a while it kind of learns that you're not supposed to go off and take that exit. So again, I think it's like training your car, like dragon, no, don't go on that exit. Stay straight, please. And then after a while, I'll notice that my car will no longer want to go take that exit because it's learned. So definitely you have to train your car and I just highly recommend you keep your hands on your steering wheel for either bridges or when it's coming across exits. Oh, and another scenario to watch out for is semi-trucks. 
So I noticed that when my car is parallel or driving next to a semi truck, it really seems to hug the truck. Not touch, not get too close, but it's a little bit close for my comfort and I would prefer it go as far as it can away from the truck while staying in the lane. And right now the car doesn't do that. So I would just put your hands on the steering wheel and personally, I would just recommend getting away from the truck by stepping on the accelerator and going in front and just totally passing him. And don't worry guys, the Model 3 can do that because there's tons of power on this car. Another word of caution is animals or roadkill or objects on the road. The other day I saw Hopefully it was like a furry hat or a furry scarf on the freeway and I basically just had to maneuver around that. So your car is not going to do that on autopilot so I would watch out for that scenario. And lastly, if you're driving on the left hand lane or the very right hand lane of a highway, watch out for large vehicles or cars parked on the shoulder of the road. If they are sticking out even a little bit, that is something that you should watch out for. The car will not be able to distinguish that. So basically just had to maneuver around that. And that's something that you would normally do anyways, but I just wanted to call that out. Now for a couple of autopilot don'ts. Do not surf on your phone while on autopilot. Do not use autopilot and take a nap and do not use autopilot and divert your attention off the road. We are just not there yet. Autopilot today on AP2 means semi-autonomous driving, which means you are still in control of your car. Now that said, I really hope sooner rather than later, we will one day be able to jump in our Model 3s and say, take me on a road trip to Vegas. And we will be able to sleep in our cars. We will be able to eat. We will be able to text put on our makeup, chat, watch a movie, and until then we should just use autopilot the way it was intended to be used. In summary, I wanted to say that autopilot is an amazing feature and I think it is a total game changer while driving. Think of it as your co-pilot. You're still the driver responsible for this car and now that autopilot is helping you, the mental energy you would have used to stay in the lane and also keep pace with the car in front of you can now be used to look further ahead and around to stay ahead of any potential dangers. So autopilot makes driving safer. So that's my tutorial and demo of AP2 autopilot in my new Tesla Model 3. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, if you like this video and you want to see more of me in videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And until then, take care guys, happy driving, stay awesome, and I will see you guys in the next one. I love you guys. Bye.